Uh, nice to meet you, everyone. So we will get started. I'm talking about CLS. Uh, before we do so, uh, I just wanted to take an opportunity to say search engine optimization, so what I'm specialized in, is not necessarily just about keywords. I know that um, there's been more and more conversations regarding how to optimize a website to make it friendly to Google, but also other search engines. And um, tonight we're going to look at one of these metrics. There's many, many metrics to help you improve. Tonight it's only one. So let me share my screen and without further ado, let's launch. So CLS, we're doing a deep dive into a new UX metric for developers. And I'm being very careful when I use the acronym UX. So we are discussing user experience, but from a different standpoint, from a, an SEO standpoint. So this changes things because the story doesn't start when the user ends up on your website. The story starts when the user ends up in Google looking for something that could be your content or website. So why am I here talking about this? Well, bonjour, hi, <laughs> my name is Miriam and uh, I live in beautiful Montreal that doesn't have snow yet, but it will come soon. And um, I own a boutique agency. That's a fancy word for saying we're two people and a wiener dog, a little sausage dog working from uh, our office. And we've been having fun these past few years. That was the shortest sales pitch you will ever get from a marketing person. Now we can move on. So I have news for you, some pretty big news. There are some major new ranking factors coming into play and the pandemic has derailed some of them. Some of them are still on track. Today we're addressing core web vitals. And here you are probably wondering, why am I talking about CLS and then jumping to core web vitals? Well, one of the issues with Google is that they're not necessarily amazing at doing internal marketing for their own products. So CLS is one of a group of three metrics that are called core web vitals. And these metrics are not here for fun and games. They're not here to help you make a better product. They are here to help Google make a better algorithm that will show more useful content for their users. Because in turn, this allows them to charge a lot more money for their ads. Never forget why certain things are motivated. So Google's new updated ranking algorithm is not necessarily incoming right away because of the pandemic. So when will it happen? It was slated for this year. Now it's been pushed back to 2021, but we're not sure exactly when. And Google will most likely let you know once they have already started penalizing your website because you haven't followed the rules. So there is no big countdown. You are just informed that these new metrics exist and you are supposed to magically be ready when Google decides it's time. That's why I decided to talk about this. I want to help developers be ready for this before someone from the marketing department comes with these really strange notions on how we could improve the website and make it faster. Because usually we know that when somebody comes and says the website is slow, they don't necessarily know how to fix it. They just want it to be fixed. So I keep talking about slow websites. Great. But why does it matter? I'm from the generation that still remembers what a 56K modem looks like and sounds like and how much it costs too. But that is to say that most of us used to be very patient online because we knew that we were limited by technology. Right now, people are not as patient. The world has moved on and user experience is more important than ever for many big companies. 
it helps make money. This is one of the reasons why people are so interested in user experience. So Google has decided to put together a bundle of metrics called Core Web Vitals. These three metrics, they are part of a bigger picture. The bigger picture is called page rank experience. So Google wants to use page rank experience, so something that they have defined themselves internally, to measure pages based on what they think the user experience should be. So this is what we are going to be talking about today. With page rank experience, Google aims to rank websites that are serving accessible, useful, usable, interesting, pertinent, timely content for people. So what they want is to find the most interesting and relevant results for their users. So if Google thinks that users are having a poor experience on your website, and mind you, this may be true, or it may not, depending on how they measure it. We all know that you know the mobile friendly test and the page speed test that they have put out are not necessarily perfect. And they have some flaws in the metrics. So bottom line is, if you do not consider this brand new metric, your rankings will suffer in 2021. So you will start going down, getting less traffic, and you will be left wondering why. Because there is no fancy alert that says so. There are a few reports in one free tool that Google gives, and that's it. And even then, it's just a piece of advice. It is not a formal warning. So how can I replace this big picture so it makes sense? Well, here are some details on page rank experience, or PRE. Search signals for, search, uh, for page experience are already in place. Some of them you already know. Mobile friendliness, offering a safe browsing experience that doesn't sell cheap, authentic Louis Vuitton shoes, for example. This is not something that we would consider safe browsing. A website that doesn't have an SSL certificate nowadays gets a, an alert in Chrome. So this is very clear. Security in the eyes of the visitor is important to them. It's very important along with no intrusive interstitials. And if you have never, ever heard of this, let me take a minute. If you have pop-ups on your website in the mobile version on the first page that the user sees when they land on your website, and it's bigger than 15% of the screen, you are not being shown as much as competing websites in mobile. This is already one of the penalties that Google has implemented to force people to have decent user experience on mobile. But that wasn't enough. Google tried to force us to use EMP. That was not necessarily a success because many people do not agree with this approach. So now, Fast forward five or six years, Google is trying something new to push people to make the web faster. Core Web Vitals. So these Core Web Vitals, like I said, number one, we have loading. Number two, interactivity. And number three, visual stability. And if you see my screen, you should see the little CLS. That is what we are talking about today. Um, my second screen has decided to not cooperate, so if you have any questions, um, let me know. Um, in Well, just speak up and I will go and check. So, let me continue. Let's deep dive into those details that we're not looking into today. <laughs> Google already uses many existing factors. So you have to be mobile friendly and there's a test for that. Do we agree on the criteria? Not always, but it's there and we have to satisfy it. Then there was the page speed update. So you can check Google page speed insight, disagree with some of their recommendations. One of my favorites is when uh, they decide to tell me that their own products, so Google Maps 
or Google Fonts or the pixels for tracking ads from Google Ads are not fast enough and that I need to optimize them. That's not possible and it's not my fault, it's yours. But here we are having a mediocre score. So like I said, these tools are not an end all. You should really look into what is the best for you, your website, your company, and then make a compromise with Google. So HTTPS got a ranking boost. There was the pop-up penalty that I discussed briefly, and their safe browsing penalties. So if your website does not feel like it's secure, or if there are a lot of uh, really strange Chinese ads, and you are an American website, it could be very odd. It could mean that your website has been hacked or something worse. So Google will penalize you. These are the details that we already know. Here are the new ones. Oh, no, let's review. So if you want to make sure that your website is mobile friendly, like I said, you just type in mobile friendly, there will be a little box that will open in Google and you can test your URL. For safe browsing, you should install a tool or you should connect it. It's called Google Search Console, it's free. And you have a security issues report. So for example, very recently, I had a situation where um, a forum was overtaken and um, they tried to get in via the signature functionality. So I got an alert and I got to call the company and say, I don't know what's going on with your forum, but you really need to fix it. It is causing us traffic issues because they are trying to hack into it. HTTPS, make sure your site's connection is secure. and. The intrusive interstitials, the pop-ups, there's no real tool to test this. You really need to go in manually and eyeball this with a designer. Google has said that they will not be releasing a tool to test this. So now that you know the past, let's look at the future. What is being measured in this new web core, core web vital bundle? How fast does your website load? That's the first metric they came up with. The largest contentful paint. That's about page speed. You can look into that. There's a lot of documentation about it. That is not our topic today. You can also look into the first input delay. So the FID, how quick is your website when it comes to becoming interactive? What features work for the user when the user wants it to work? How long does it take for your site to process the user feedback, the input? So there's nothing worse for me, and I'm, I'm experiencing this on a pharmacy website here in Canada, where if you want to add a product, there is a delay and you end up by clicking three times because nothing happens and you end up with three times the product in the cart. This is not fun. This is also not our topic, sadly. Today, we are talking about cumulative layout shift, CLS for short. That is one part that is a bit trickier to understand and a bit trickier to debug. So that's why we're talking about it. It's when Google is asking, how stable is your website from a visual standpoint? Not a code one, but a you know visual. If I load this on my on my um, phone, is it going to move all over the place and make for a terrible experience, or is it going to hold up and make sense for me? So ultimately, CLS is all about visual stability, and this is something that, as users, we know. A flash of unformatted text is pretty terrible. Having to read content that keeps jumping all over the place because there's different blocks and sidebars that show up is a terrible experience. And there is nothing more frustrating when it comes to visual stability than clicking something that you want and ending up on an advertisement because you didn't click fast enough and the ad finally got injected into the page. And here you are looking at Walmart. That was not your intent. This is what Google is trying to fight. So how does one measure Core Web Vitals? It's tricky. 
it's tricky and you do have reports in the Google Search Console, as I have discussed. So this is a very interesting tool because yes, it will show you some of the keywords that people have typed to get to your website, but it shows you a lot of technical information regarding how Google processes your code, how it processes your content from a technical standpoint. So this will give you an idea of what your problems are and what pages are identified as problematic. You can go and investigate and to start looking at what the potential issues are, the first step is to go into the page speed insight tool. But the problem with this one is, as I've told you, sometimes it's nice, sometimes it doesn't necessarily tell the truth. So I went a bit further. I was wondering, okay, how can I debug how much my page is moving and how unstable it is if I can't see it. So how do we get visibility beyond the score? Because this, the ideal score is 0 0.1 or less. Here on the left, you can see on the top, there is something red that says CLS 0 0.387. That is the CLS score for this page. And as you can see in the automated GIF, I'm not going to say GIF, I'm sorry. Um, you can see that there is a lot of red and there is an insane amount of movement, most likely due to the fact that an ad is trying to get up here and an ad actually did make it on here. And then there is a please sign up to our newsletter and then there is the cookie banner. So these situations are a bit odd. And if you are wondering what you can do about this, let's talk about the tools. You can see your CLS score in the metric summary at the top of your Lighthouse audit. If you do not know what a Lighthouse audit is, please head on over, not right now, but later after this talk, head on over to the um, Chrome code inspection tool. Your debug console has Lighthouse. Lighthouse is an audit tool that you can use to at least start looking into, is my website accessible and is it accessible for bots, AKA for SEO? You can also use something that is called the Chrome User Experience Report or the crux, I guess. Um, this I really like, here's why. I like this report because I can make it visual by connecting it to another tool that Google offers called Google uh, Data Studio. It's a dashboarding tool, meaning that I can make this information easily visual and easily understood to someone else in the company. I can communicate a dashboard that explains what the problem is. So I personally really like this because it's a bridge between developer teams and marketing teams. Uh, for more granular data, there's even an API if you want in Chromium. So you can calculate rates like the layout shift per minute. So I'm going to get into that and explain it to you. But cumulative means that they are accumulating different changes from the start until the end of the page load. So your situation can get exponentially bigger and more problematic the longer it takes to load your page. This is where certain metrics that you would calculate, you know, on your own, like layout shifts per minute, this is not available in the Lighthouse audit. It's not available in the Chrome user experience report. This is only available to those that use the API because you decide what data you want in what form. So go for it. This is just a recommendation. And my last one is the tool that helped me generate this animated GIF that I have communicated to the developer to say, hey, we really need to start thinking about this. This tool was put together by a developer who actually does SEO as well. So it's very useful and I like it because it helps me see what the problem is. And overall, if this score gets taken into account, everyone wins. Well, according to Google, but I can't really talk badly about it because I agree, two 
many things move too much while things are loading. I get confused and frustrated and angry as a user. So Google studies have shown that visitors are 24% more likely to give up on a website that um, doesn't mean that doesn't meet these requirements. So it's uh, actually no, I'm saying the opposite. 24% of the people will stay and hang on if your website is faster where they would normally just up and leave. So we know that people are fickle, but we know that as soon as something gives the impression of loading fast and behaves the way we expect it to, we are happy campers and we're willing to wait a bit more. Another little um, bonus, a little thing that Google is trying to bring in to motivate people to take care of the CLS is that they are finally giving up some of AMP's dominions. So AMP won't be the criteria to be featured in the top stories, in the results. So I don't know if you've ever seen the top stories, but before you had to have an AMP version of your page to be able to show up there, to even enter that race for visibility. Now this will be phased out and many more websites will have a shot at the top stories feature. So this is the part where I stop sounding like a corporate robot. Why are we coming out with this metric? So th this is an honest explanation. Unexpected content shifts just suck. They do not meet our exp expectations. It just doesn't work. And no matter how much you complain, this will end up being logged in a ticket that nobody will ever take care of because nobody can see the problem. Nobody wants to debug this. It's not penalized. Nobody will complain about it. You just have to put up with it. It's the web. Too bad. Well, no longer because Google decided to create a metric to measure how much these content shifts suck, except that they don't say it that way. They just call it <clears throat> measuring layout instability. So basically it's a user experience metric, but it focuses on UX beyond performance for developers. So it's not just about having the fastest website. I'm sorry that that's not enough. That's not the point. The point is to provide a good experience so people will enjoy using your product or, you know, buying it or stay loyal to the brand. The point is to have a relationship with humans, not be technically good. So even though I just said that, I know, I know, I know that the main question many of us wonder when we see these metrics is, give me the score. What is a good score? So like I said, less than 0.1. But the problem with the score is, how is it calculated, really? So that's where it gets interesting. Google has decided to fix the threshold to measure this at the 75th percentile of page loads. So this is segmented across a wide range of experiences, mobile and desktop devices, and they've decided this is good and this is bad compared to the web at large that we would recommend. This is not about attaining perfection. This is about being better than, you know, the 75th percentile, the end. So how is this calculated? This is where it gets a bit confusing. This is the part that you need to pay attention to because otherwise you may get a migraine trying to understand it from the documentation. I have tried. So first, they decided, when I say they decided, it's, it's um, a team within the Chromium team that has been tasked with developing these metrics over two years, I think. So they decided to look at how big is the disaster zone. So that's what they call the impact region. So it's the area on the screen that was affected. And to do that, the team looked at DOM elements that shifted from one animation frame to the next. Usually, I know it's us, ads, marketing. Usually ads are the ones that mess us up. And one of the reasons why 
is bad stewardship. But that's just a parenthesis. Um, if you're letting any type of banner or display ad come onto your website without checking how heavy it is and what's going on, let me tell you, some people have just snuck in banner ads, some incredibly heavy videos, animated images, images. It's just a bit of a mess. So you need to be a better steward and decide who are we letting on or not if you have ads. Um, but here's where it gets tricky. The ads are not considered as shifted elements because Google doesn't want to penalize new elements that come into the page because it's a common thing that happens during progressive rendering and also because Google sells these ads so you can see the problematic with this. It's a compromise, but we're calling it out. And if there are too many shifted elements in the same animation frame, so in just one frame to the next, or if elements move, you know, horizontally or vertically. So they didn't decide that the impact region should be a neat little rectangle. No, no. It can actually look like a bomb going off as well. It really depends on the impact region. So they are looking up and down and sideways to really see what's going on. And that's why you can have multiple zones showing up, not just a little triangle. So this is what you were seeing multiple zones being affected. The impact area in this case is pretty big. Once they have figured out what the impact region is, they need to look into different ratios. So first, they will look at the impact region that they have defined as compared to the viewport. So they have a normalization across device and window sizes. So this ratio um, is called the impact fraction. It's the impact region to the viewport. And if something moves a lot, this is a problem for us as a user. But if something moves a little, it's less distracting. So that's also a measure. This is something that needs to be counted for because if you move all the way to the end, it's much more traumatizing than if you moved, you know, just a little bit. So they are measuring the maximum move distance from one frame to the next. This gives you a layout shift score. So it's really calculated between the impact fraction and the distance fraction. And you can see it here. This is a, this is a, a little screenshot from the Google PageSpeed tool. And you can see that each animation frame at the bottom is shown. So this is what they mean by cumulative. The more that score will change from one animation frame to the next, the bigger your total score is. So this means that if you move a lot, within one frame, your score could already be very big. Or it also means that if you move a little and a little and a little and a little, it does add up. It is accumulated. So this means that even if you have an overall OK um, shift while this loads, but the shifting gets repeated every single frame, you are going to have issues just as well as, you know, other developers that just made one giant move. So what are the most common issues? And I dug into this because I thought it was very interesting to talk about these three problems that not many people know about. Number one, should we penalize a web page that changes and has layout shifts due to user input. No, that was the conclusion. So the solution for this is that there is an inclusion input window that will ignore any shifts happening in the layout within half a second of the user input. So if you ask the user to do something or if the user does something uh, and it changes how the rendering uh, occurs, then you have half a second to do that. That is your window.
And there's a, another problem that people don't address. If you use position offsets or any layout related properties with CSS, it causes Google to rerun the browser's layout engine for every single animation frame. So that means that, you know, you will end up with a huge score because every single frame gets its own shift score and it, it adds up. So what is the proper solution? The solution recommended by Google is to, to just go ahead and ignore changes to the transform property. So transform does not influence the surrounding layout. It does not cause the um, browser's layout engine to just rerun every single frame. So this is good. As long as you, your carousel, for example, is built with that, your CLS score is fine. And the bonus is that with this property, you can be a bit more efficient even if your page is script heavy. Keyword here is you can be. There is no guarantee. I have learned that. So this is not the best um, screenshot I have ever done, but it is a very useful one. You can debug this in the DevTools, like I said. The problem is finding it. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. So from the menu, you should go to more tools, go into rendering, and I can show this at the end of the presentation. And then in rendering, you will see that the second option is layout shift regions. You can actually have fun with this. So why? Well, because you have to be able to see how things move. This is important. And contrary to the tool that I have shown you, the shifted contents will be highlighted in blue and not in red. So don't be alarmed. Um, this is the most useful feature to help you. If you can't see how it moves, you can't make it stop moving. What are the most common issues that everybody runs into that can impact this score? <sighs> we are running into the same things over and over and over again. Unsized images, <laughs> add size attributes or reserve the required space with a CSS aspect ratio. Please, please, please get this done. Am I guilty of this? Yes, on some websites, I'm also guilty of importing a giant stock photo because I don't have time and I'm hoping that there is something magically there that will just resize it, scale it, make sure that all size attributes are happening. I'm going blind. Should I? No. Then again, I'm not necessarily the one who's supposed to be uploading the image, period. So, you know, some things do happen. And I'm just basically telling you, don't take for granted that marketing, design, user experience, I, CX will take care of this. Always check. I'm not saying that it's your responsibility to fix it, but I'm saying that it is your responsibility to make sure if somebody is not respecting what they should when it comes to good stewardship regarding images. Slow loading fonts are also an issue, especially on slow connections. And lately, I don't know about you, but my connections have been slowing down. So consider font display optional or consider a font style matching tool for your fallback font. This is important because um, the more people work from home and the more some countries have issues. If you have a fast internet connection, congratulations to you. This is not the reality for most of the world. And even if it is, it is not a guaranteed experience. We have ups, we have downs, so take care of that. Then there is the injected content after the page was loaded. I told you that ads were not necessarily taken into account, but I already told you that there are some issues with them. So please reserve space for late loaded promos, for your small promo bars, for anything that could happen in your website that you actually do control. So your internal ads, promos, make sure that you know you prepare the space or you use position fixed. Uh, this can help or you can use both. 
Avoid flashes of unstyled content. This, this causes a lot of moving around. This is something that we actually do notice as users. So ensure that the CSS is loaded before content. And animations that trigger layout changes must be eliminated or transferred over to a transform property instead of any other CSS property that could cause a layout shift. Because if you do that, you're forcing the browser's rendering engine to just take care of every single frame and not helping yourself. So am I good with CSS? No. What do I recommend you do then? Do not email me about this. Check CSS triggers for a list or check in the room. There are quite a few people that do know how CSS works much better than I do, and that can help you out. If you want to know more, you can listen to Annie and Steve from the Chromium team talk about it during another conference. Why am I including this? Because um, the, this team has been much less responsive since the pandemic on social media. Normally, you would be able to ask them questions. Now, if you do want to give them feedback on this project, however, they do provide an email speedmetricsdev at chromium.org. This is why I have included this. If you want to participate, give feedback, be useful to this project that is very interesting, do not hesitate to reach out to them. This is not a spam line or a support line. This is genuinely just to improve things. Oh, and this is it. Oops. Thank you. Um, we go to, through the, you get your microphone. We lost you. <laughs> I've been lost. I only yeah. see myself. Just give me a second and I shall find them back. Okay. Or not. Um, Help me escape my own face. Yes, um, perfect. I am here. I see the chat. I'm going to turn my camera on and um, jump in. OK. So, so did you, question. first question, oh, do you want to read it? Yeah, maybe it will be easy for you. No? Uh, did you think that RGPD pop-up could uh, affect the page rank? So let me answer that. So just for the record, this is not this conference, but I have written an extensive article on this on Smashing Magazine. So if your pop-up is legal in nature, so you are asking somebody their age, or if you're asking them to approve of something that is just legally required, um, Google will not be uh, penalizing you about this. So of course, are there cases that are gray zones where your uh, GDPR pop-up could end up um, hurting your traffic. Yes. This has been proven about two years ago. Mm -hmm. Has Google gotten better at this? Yes, but you have to make it very clear that it's a legal nature. So if it's age or um, cookies, it's fine. If you're asking the user, can you please give us your um, language or give us your location? Not fine. Okay, nice. Do we already have a tool by Google or not to test CLS or other core web vitals? So you talk about, um, I Let, think. Can I show system. them? I really want to yeah. show them. Can somebody go in the chat and give me a URL to test? Mm. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to check the chat. Yes. Okay. I see. Okay. <laughs> I see quite a few. <laughs> I'm going to click on web.dev. So let me take this and share my screen. And now I'm going to take the other two to show you other tools. Oh, now my second screen does work. Great. So first things first, um, the tool that I have linked is defaced.dev and you can test here. So let's generate little animated GIF. There are details about how this works, so you can absolutely have fun with this. While this is running, let me show you something else. So I'm going to go on 
Adrien's website. And let me show you how it works in the debug console. OK, so let's close this thing that always distracts me. And we have Lighthouse here. So you can generate a report, which is great. You have SEO, accessibility, et cetera. But what we are interested in, more specifically, is to go here, more tools, da, 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 rendering. And here, you can see layout shift regions. So I have not tried this one, actually, yet. Well, it didn't do much. That's a bit strange. No, OK, well. Uh, da, 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 you should play around with this and then launch your audit to see how it works. I'm pretty sure that Joffrey probably has an opinion on this and will help us out. And in the meantime, I'm getting back here with a CLS score of zero. It seems like nothing moves. So that's a bit strange. Either it's perfect or something went wrong. So I'm going to try this one. And before I end up answering all of this, there is a third option on top of the API. If you go in Google Search Console, which is, like I said, a free tool, you will have on the left Core Web Vitals. And as you can see, there's no mobile information yet for my website. But I do see that I don't have issues here. Just a moment to show you when things go wrong. If somebody wants to help me with this, please. Um, here is my pet blog. I have a dog. I have a dog blog now. And as you can see, the dog blog is not doing as well <laughs> as the other website. So normally, you have the debug console. You have the, the tool I have spoken about. So we can see the website here. The CLS score is really nice. You can see that there's a few things that change. But is the impact area big? No. Not at all. So this isn't, if I were judging this website, I would not be scared at all regarding CLS. Well, for this specific page, of course, I would go into this tool to make sure that there are no other pages that are problematic. So here I do have a list, LCP and CLS. So that's the one I talked about today. Let me stop my screen share and get back to the rest of the questions. OK. Um... Is the CLS measure only at the load of the page, or did you think that CLS should also also be measured during the use of application? So uh, th this is this is a bit of a tricky one. Um, the reason why is that you have to understand this metric in the context that it's offered in. Google is trying to find a more durable, more understandable way to basically inform and force people to make their websites faster. So before it was just load time. And the most common problem with load time is that everybody has a different opinion. So then they broke it down in different metrics. But ultimately, what are these metrics? Are they truly user experience metrics? No, they're not. They are metrics to make sure that your website loads fast so Google can serve pertinent information to users. I will say one thing, though. The score is very interesting, and it's much more sophisticated in the way that it's measured compared to what I've seen Google do to date. So would I recycle this measure internally, maybe? Yes. Because for example, if I'm trying to purchase something, and I've already entered your website, home page, check the product page, check the sales page, went on the cart, and I'm willing to input my credit card, and this is where you go wrong and make me feel like my credit card has not been part, like did not go through. Yeah, I, I would be scared. Or if there's like un, unstyled content or something going on that makes me not trust your website, that would be scary. So that that's where I think CLS could be used um, beyond the initial make Google happy. Uh, you talk about EMP and uh, feature ranking. Uh, did you think that, that Google is starting to kill EMP, or are they just starting to provide EMP components that are compatible with the core web vitals? Oh, that is a tricky question, and I love it. I have so many, many opinions about this. OK, so first of all, disclaimer. Um, I'm human and I'm biased. Okay. Second disclaimer, I absolutely despise EMP. 
I, I despise it. I think it's it's a monopoly play and I, I it just is broken. So instead of me complaining about it, let me explain the context once again. Um, AMP was a way for Google to dominate mobile results, mobile web, period around the world because most of us think of a shift between desktop and mobile that is not the case that is not the case the reason why is that um, many countries third world countries started with mobile many countries have limitations and they will make sure that their bandwidth is used to the best of their ability so that's why amp was important it was a way to dominate those markets really fast from the get-go instead of fighting for dominance later with, against facebook and others so this is why amp came out and they tried to push it as much as they could legally meaning that they couldn't say that it will give you a boost because then they would get sued for monopoly because there's laws against this. If you create something and say, if you don't use this thing, then you are not going to appear naturally in this other thing, you can be sued uh, because you are literally setting up a monopoly. So do I think Google will kill off uh, AMP? No, they just came out with this brand new feature that is supposed to look like stories from Instagram in AMP. It's actually pretty fun to communicate stuff if you're a developer, but it's not much else. So are they going to keep hanging on to it for another five years? Maybe, but they are definitely going to make sure that AMP plays nice with Core Web Vitals and that Core Web Vitals will replace AMP going further. So no matter what the technology is, you will have to conform to this. So yeah, here you go. So whether it's compatible or not, we, we know it's going to have to be compatible, but I would not say we'll replace it. I would just say that at some point in the future, I'm crossing my fingers that Google will sunset the AMP. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that, that, that was opinions. <laughs> okay. Is CLS measure outside of viewport area? Or uh, just um, in the in the main uh, in, on the visible uh, part. So this is the interesting part. It's not the visible area. It is the impact area. So the impact area is the first thing they measure. What is my danger zone? What is my disaster zone? Meaning that CLS is measured in. Um, with starting with this so it's not going to look into the entire page it's only going to look at your disaster zone so that's why they they try to provide a normalized measure by using um the uh i think it was the impact ratio using the viewport so it's across multiple devices so they can give you a score that's not like but if i look at it this way it's not that good and if i it's a score that's meant to be much harder to attack or debunk because they thought about this. They really want this to represent a normalized view of what the experience is when it comes to content layout shift. So yeah, pretty much you're stuck with the viewport. And uh, for the moment, last question. Is there any other Core Web Vitals metrics not created by Google that you recommend to look at? Mm. So the problem is that the core web vitals were created by Google. So we're kind of stuck at this. And I'm, I'm actually waiting to see how this plays out because um, I, I tried to look into it and I'm wondering if they're not going to come out with even more metrics or if other companies will look at other metrics to say, we disagree with this fundamentally because it doesn't necessarily represent, like um, one of you was asking, yes, but what about CLS, you know, beyond load time? Like what if I'm not into SEO and I just want to provide good experience? Well, what are these metrics? There's multiple ones, but not necessarily ones that speak to developers across the board. So ta-da. And last one. Yes, you talk about CSS, but do you know if you do shifty animation with GS directly? If there is, this is also going in measure uh, in layout shift. So ultimately, it really does depend on the uh, flavor of the shitty JavaScript animation. Uh, so <laughs> let me explain this. Um, this actually would not necessarily impact CLS, but um, it would impact how Google renders your page. Like depending on 
what the JavaScript animation is, it actually could cause rendering issues, period. Meaning that the bot would not even be able to render the page fully. And what most people don't know is that Google has a, um, this is an oversimplified simplification, but they have a two wave process. So first they will render what they can and if there's JavaScript or way too much JavaScript that like they will wait later to um, actually go through it and render it. So they put it in a little pocket and it goes into another backlog for when the bot has time to go through and crawl again. So meaning that if you tell me that you have certain shitty animations in JavaScript, I'm already curious to know before we even talk about performance in the sense of load time and experience, hey, can the bot actually see it? That's my first question. And this is something that you can actually check in Google Search Console. There's other tools for that, but you can render the page the way Google does to see what it looks like. Okay. Um, again, about Core Web Vitals and uh, its metric, its new metric, FID, CLS, uh, etc. cetera. Um, did you have uh, any feedback about uh, some of the most important metric for the ranking? So I'm going to be honest with you. The one that you will keep having problems with is not necessarily CLS. The, the first one that you need to de debug is like the largest content um, paint. Or I don't remember exactly how to name it, but th this one is basically how fast does your website load, period. So this is something that is a new name for an old problem. But what they've done is divorce it. So instead of having one schizophrenic metric, you have three. Um, and when it comes to these, the reason why I decided to talk about uh, CLS is that it's the one that nobody really wants to talk about. I mean, all the other ones, we know it's bad. We know we have to focus on it. We know that there's money tied to this, but the content layout shift hasn't been something tangible. What most people will complain about is I can't see because of these pop-ups. I can't do what I want. It's annoying. I ended up by clicking an ad, but they don't get down to the core. So that's why I favored CLS today, because I think that this is something that needs to be taken into account at the page design level, like before we even think about pushing something. Okay, how is it going to react online? How does it travel? What's the experience? So that's why I looked at it. But I'm telling you right away, I know that LCP is the one that people are still going to struggle with. CLS, it will be fun. You will hit some limits and you will go, okay, I've done my best. But LCP at the end of the day, that's um, ultimately the biggest impact. Does it load fast? Because if not, your um, Google mobile results will suffer. Like it's a physical thing. You will not be shown as much as other websites that are more mobile friendly. Okay. Is there anybody have any question? No. So if um, you are too shy, I think we can go uh, to the floor and maybe uh, stay a little bit again with uh, with Miriam. She will she will go in uh, in the room. So I'm, yeah, I'm discovering the chat as well. So I'm seeing a lot of thank yous. I'm really really happy that um, people find this useful because I know that there's a stigma compared to my job and that many people think I do social media like cat pictures and it's not. It's not that at all. <laughs> so go ahead and ask like all the questions that you ever wanted to ask. Now is the time. Um, here's why. It can actually go beyond CLS. Did you know that most um, recruiters don't even read CVs anymore? They feed them to bots that behave rather similarly to a crawler bot from a search engine. So you got to make sure your content is bot friendly too. Ask me questions about that if you need to. Okay, thank you. I will just cut the, the presentation mode and see you in, in the floor. Thank you thank again. You.